Good evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another edition of Talking Point on Hilal TV, channel 347 on DSTV. My name is Faraz Patel. We say jazakallah. We say thank you for joining us here tonight. Now, this weekend, the IXA convention will be happening in Johannesburg, in Nana Memorial. That's in Crosby, Johannesburg. The theme for this uh, convention is unity and building bridges across the diverse communities that we have here in South Africa. And it gives me great pleasure in introducing the next, these two guests, two brothers that will be speaking at the convention. I'd like to welcome Dr. Harun Abbasi and Dr. Naeem Baik. We say jazakallah to you Thank so you. much for making the time for us and coming here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. No, no it's an absolute pleasure. Dr. Abbasi, I wanted to uh, start off with you. Uh, Iksa, uh, just how did this organization start and what was the purpose of this organization? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakallah for the invitation and uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to viewer. Uh, Islamic Circle of Southern Africa is a non-profit grassroots DAWA and social services organization. It was established in July 2011 and uh, we have a many uh, different uh, social activities and therapy activities for the youth and uh, adults as well and the women. And uh, since then, uh, every year we used to have uh, conventions, uh, but due to the COVID past two years, we were limited in terms of the number, but we still had a, a one convention in Johannesburg uh, in which uh, mayor of the Johannesburg was the, our chief guest. And uh, this year, when we have this permission of uh, open convention, we had the last week convention in King Williamstown uh, in uh, Eastern Cape. And uh, this coming uh, weekend, inshallah, we are going to have a uh, convention in Nana Memorial Center in Brixton. So, I want to bring you in, uh, uh, Brother Naeem. Just how important is it that these conversations happen? Because it's one thing having the conventions and you walk out of the convention and uh, there is no real substance to it, mm -hmm. but to make sure that the communities and the surroundings around us buy into it and they are able to practice it after the convention is done. Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, when we, when we talk about uh, Islamic conferences and conventions, you know, from my experience in the U.S., uh, alhamdulillah, uh, just... Uh, a um, couple of months ago, ICNA National Convention, Islamic Circle of North America. Mm. Uh, our convention had over 26,000 participants in, in the convention, which was held in Baltimore. And the, the whole purpose of, of the convention is uh, not only just bringing people together, but creating an awareness of the issues that are affecting the society at large mm. and also the Muslim community. So giving them a, a sense of community, a sense of empowerment, and engagement in the larger society. And I, I think that's the main purpose of these conventions and conferences. Dr. Abbasi, you mentioned that there are four different topics that you're going to be looking at. Um, yeah. Obviously, before we go ahead and talk about that, just give us an idea of your role with Islamic circles of South Africa, how long you've been in, and of course, uh, you know, different uh, stakeholders that you've been working with to make sure that the communities that you reach out to are able to benefit, not just only from the talks, but so many of the outreach programs that, uh, that you guys do. Yeah, sure. Uh, Islamic Circle of Southern Africa is working with uh, many Muslim organizations uh, locally and uh, also ICNA is also because they are more experienced in, in social services. Uh, so they have been actually, their advice all, I mean, has been uh, good for us to establish uh, I mean, our organization here as well. And uh, besides that, the local organization, Muslim organization, South African National Civic Organization, which is the biggest, which have the membership of the millions, uh, has been working with us uh, for the past six years through for our social services. And our social services uh, include uh, one, the health services, mm. uh, one is the cataract pro project, I will elaborate on it further. And uh, the second one is uh, Westbury Health Clinic in one of the very poorest area in Johannesburg. Uh, besides that, we have got uh, 
uh, youth empowerment, women empowerment, uh, shoe and clothes project and uh, feed hungry project. So these are our main projects and obviously I'm going to elaborate further what we have been doing so far over the years. Yeah, we are going to touch on that in a bit. Uh, Brother Naeem, you're both here in South Africa, of course, where you come from the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Uh, we live in a uh, society that's very democratic and there's a lot of diverse groups, none right. more so than, of course, in the USA where you've got a huge amount of different ethnic uh, right. groups. How important is it to build bridges with those ethnic groups as a Muslim to make sure that there's a sense of harmony within the communities because the Muslims are not just situated in one isolated area. They live amongst so many people. So how important are these conventions and just having a sense of community with different ethnic groups in making sure that there can be peace and harmony wherever it is that they live? So a um, simple answer is that Islam is all about engaging in the larger society. Yes. Um, in America, uh, not just the, the whole diversity of the whole nation, but even among Muslims, mm -hmm. uh, there are 80 plus different ethnicities of Muslims in America. Mm -hmm. There are Muslims who were uh, brought to America in chains, yes. enslaved uh, Africans who were brought to America. And then the Muslims who migrated to America came by choice. Yes. And, um, and along with that, uh, the larger society, people who are becoming Muslim in America from different ethnicities and different uh, backgrounds. So um, what we felt was that um, in order for our community, and especially I'm talking about Muslims who came from in the in, you know, 60s onwards, that America is your home. America is your home now. And as we are worried about our families and our children, we must worry about the larger American society and where this, the country is going. And through building bridges with other interfaith organizations, um, we um, not only interfaith organizations are for dialogue or conversation or theology, uh, but at the same time, issues that are affecting the larger society, issues of racism, mm. issue of income uh, inequality, um, issues of um, marriage, sanctity of marriage, marriage as an institution. Mm. So standing with other faith communities uh, who we feel that we, can, we share these um, uh, moral qualities and characters, and then strengthening each other to do this work. I want to talk of one of the outreach programs that you, uh, that ICSA is doing, Dr. Abasi, uh, food distribution. We've seen that uh, unemployment in South Africa is yeah. at an all-time low. Uh, we see hungry children, and COVID-19 has uh, made it even worse because a lot of the children have lost their parents or a lot of them can't find work because they had to be retrenched due to COVID-19. How important is the, the food outreach program in making sure that the food, which is a basic human right, is achieved in helping those communities? Yeah, it's a very good question, actually, and it's a challenge for all those people, those who can afford food on their table every day. We have many stories to tell and particularly during the COVID time when it was uh, so difficult to come out of the houses. And then because people knew about our, our organization, then we start getting telephone call. Many people hungry for the days. Many people uh, like there's nothing to eat, how to reach to them. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we just I mean, took care of the um, COVID precautions, and uh, uh, we we uh, di I mean uh, distributed food hampers to so many places, particularly in Johannesburg, but also uh, in our other part of the countries in Eastern Cape, King Williamstown, East London, uh, Queenstown, uh, also in Peter's Marysburg and in Natal and Durban as well. So there's a long, many, many stories where people can't afford, and this is ongoing problem. It hasn't finished, and I must mention uh, the few of the Muslim family, those who used to donate uh, in other times, have come to that 
level that they can't afford for themselves. Uh, and similarly, for their school fees, uh, to the chi for the children um, renting the house, and then not uh, no affordability for the uh, I mean uh, to rent the house. Uh, there are so many problems we encountered, but Alhamdulillah, through the help, uh, I mean, help of the communities, uh, we have been doing it and uh, we continue to do it. Uh, beside that, similar uh, situation is for our uh, shoe and clothes project. Uh, so we requested the brother and the sister to donate uh, clothes uh, for the children, for the elderly, and particularly uh, in, a, um, uh, in a religious point of view, the time when they needed the most, for example, in Easter time, uh, uh, in Ramadan and the Eid time for the Muslim community, and also uh, then the Christmas time uh, for the Christian communities, uh, we distribute uh, the shoe and clothes in different places of the country as well. But I must mention the other project which uh, I haven't touched now is our health projects. Okay, we are going to touch on that. I was actually going right. to say we're going to touch on that after yeah. the break. Yes, uh, okay. We have to go to a break. We are going to touch on the health uh, project and, of course, women empowerment because I yeah, want to talk and, both and to youth. both of you, brothers, with regards yeah. to that. Do stay tuned to Talking Point. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Talking Point on Hilal TV Channel 347. We're looking ahead to the IXA Summit Convention that is happening this weekend at Nana Memorial. That's in Johannesburg, Crosby. Uh, we were, brothers, we were just continuing about two of the outreach programs that, uh, uh, the other two outreach programs. But before I come to you, uh, Dr. Abbas, I want to go to Brother Naeem. Brother Naeem, Women Empowerment. Um, South Africa over the last few years, and I mean, this has been made widely public, but it's been happening before, uh, is gender-based violence and mm -hmm. uh, the scourge of it. Uh, I mean, President Sol Ramaphosa called it the second pandemic after, of course, mm -hmm. the COVID-19 one, and this is because we've seen so many women uh, succumbing to, you know, the brutality uh, that, that, that happens to them. Mm -hmm. And if there's one way for them to escape, it would be, you know, having a sense of not just job security, but a sense of them being a creator of their own destiny. Of course, Allah determines our destiny, but they can take that step. How important is uh, Iksa in making sure that women have that, that they can, you know, start their own business or be part of a, you know, be part of a company that helps them socially, but also allows them to earn an income? Yeah. So, um, I think for uh, Iksa, Dr. Abbasi can, mm. can uh, elaborate more on this. Uh, but I must say that um, even from our faith perspective, when we look at the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mm. and the, the, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, addresses the issues of uh, uh, equity, mm. uh, Muslim men and Muslim women, and recognizing their qualities at, at different places in the Quran and, and how... Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized the seeking of education both for Muslim men and Muslim women is obligatory. And I think from um, uh, 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 as an American Muslim, our experiences in America is that Alhamdulillah, uh, Muslim women uh, in America are, you know, in the leading places mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in Muslim communities, societies, organizations, and, um, and, and uh, along with that, um, you know, uh, in, in universities, they are um, in the field of academia. Muslim mm. women are, you know, going into PhD programs of social sciences and Islamic studies. So, um, uh, you know, there is uh, there's this sense in the uh, Muslim community in America that, you know, unless we are all men, women, uh, youth, we are all engaged as Muslims in the society at large uh, will not be seen as, uh, uh, as equal Americans mm. by the larger society. And I think that's what I Iksa is trying to do, to empower the Muslim uh, woman, and not just the Muslim woman, but the larger, in the larger society as well. I want to bring you in, Dr. Abashi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a... From the Iksa's point of view, we relate very much the youth and the women together because we think that if the if 
current youth, if I'm, I'm sure uh, your viewership, uh, the people, many people will know that uh, the child who gets admitted in grade one, so 50% of them, they can't reach to the metric. So they fall out of the school. Mm. And uh, then those who reach to the university and qualify with a degree, probably the same percentage, they don't get the jobs. Now, where we are heading to? So this is a big question for all of us. So what uh, in ICSA we are doing, we started with the ICSA kids uh, from that boys, girls, and then uh, uh, for the for the people with the other faith, we are requesting them to be part of ICSA as an ICSA volunteer. Mm. So what we are trying to do through this, that the ICSA youth should be a part of all distribution, whatever we are doing. So what will happen that uh, those who can share, they will share, and those who can distribute, just give their time, uh, they will be together by, uh, while doing that. And through this, uh, uh, it, uh, how to help each other while they are studying, uh, how to develop the tuition center for them, those who can afford, so we can want to build that. At the moment, we are obviously very in, at the initial stage. Uh, in the long term, uh, a, a natural leadership will grow, those who can give more time, those who can uh, get the people together for the all communities. So we are going to have an honest, credible, uh, and natural leadership in the society. Uh, that's one aspect of it. On the other aspect, obviously, the women, uh, those are unskilled, uh, what we can do. We have some plans in our mind. Obviously, uh, as a uh, social services organization, you can do only so much. But we did try, as I mentioned about one of our convention, uh, our Johannesburg mayor was with us. Uh, unfortunately, he's late. But mm. uh, somehow, we want to have a, a, a partnership with the more resourceful uh, uh, areas, government is one of them, and that uh, where we can have a un, for the unskilled uh, uh, ladies uh, to give them some skills so that they don't uh, just dependent on somebody else and get exploited. So that's the other aspect we want to uh, tackle. But it starts, I mean, that's why the youth and the women empowerment is a very, very important segment uh, of our future vision and we'll continue to the, uh, uh, obviously do the work on that. And even this, in this convention, uh, one of the mayors of uh, Bloemfontein, her first name is Sylvia, she is going to be the speaker in women empowerment section uh, in which the topic is, uh, is the women, children, uh, and people with disability. Yes. Uh, is There's the actual department. Uh, uh, yeah, it's department exactly. So yes. to talk about that uh, and to educate uh, the larger community. And obviously, I will request to all those, uh, those people, those who are listening and viewing us to join us because this is a very, very important target for the future for all of us to, uh, it's, it's, it's magnanimity is probably not um, is misunderstood and uh, is underestimated uh, the way we are heading to. So we want to obviously do as a community whatever we can. Sir, of course, yes, yes, sure, no uh, You know, from the uh, American experience, um, one of the things that happened uh, in the last 20 years was the um, the sense of the American Muslim community that America is our home. Mm. And now we are going to see how we can engage in the society at large. Um, we have now two Muslim women sitting in the Congress, right? Yes. Uh, Ilhan Oman and Rashid Atalay. Yes. So they are sitting in the Congress. So they are, you know, uh, role models for, for not just Muslim women, but for um, minority women in America. That, you know, here is someone who covers her head and can be elected yes. as, a, as a Congresswoman. Secondly, on the issue of gender, uh, gender-based violence, I think this is an issue which, uh, unfortunately, a, in my opinion, is not addressed from the pulpit in our masajid. And so we recognize uh, this deficiency, and um, in, the, uh, in the last few years, um, in America, we have um, a month of addressing domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So we have created Juma khutbas for the imams to, uh, to, to address this topic, to raise awareness on, on these issues. And 
the, uh, there is a stigma of counseling in our community. So encouraging families to seek counseling, it's not bad, it will help you. Mm -hmm. It is according to the guidance of Quran. So I think if we address these issues um, and, and making leadership responsible yes. to address those issues, <clears throat> so inshallah, I think, you know, as yeah. Dr. Abbasi was saying, uh, there are many, many more positive aspects can be, can be taken out. Dr. Abbasi, before we go to the break, uh, I want to talk about the uh, health services that was offered. We saw during COVID-19 many Muslim organizations mm -hmm banding together, either whether it was COVID-19 testing, uh, we saw in the Houghton Masjid, uh, you know, the vaccination drives that were happening, uh, Iksa's role in health services. You spoke about the cataract, a, a new cataract uh, yeah. development yeah. Okay. that, is, that so, is being there. I mean, our cataract project have yeah. been running for a number of years, and, uh, and other local Muslim organization, uh, IMA and OCOF and a few others, individuals have been helping us, few others, few, some businesses are helping us, and uh, through that project, it's, uh, I'm sure it's a, it's a very big achievement. So, so far, we have done over 8,000 cataract uh, free of charge for the underprivileged uh, population of this country. And uh, currently in Laratong Hospital and before that in Sebuking Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, this project used to run. Recently started uh, uh, in one, one of our hospital near to Baragwanath Hospital, St. John's Hospital. Mm -hmm. So they started it there as well. And this project has, award, has been awarded twice, mm. the Khanisa Award from the Houting government. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah, uh, we'll continue to do uh, this uh, project in future as well. And uh, there is approximately 70,000 people are blind in South Africa on a waiting list. And the waiting list is one year to two years' time. And there are many stories, uh, if you have a time, I'll, uh, I'll tell you But uh, about this. Uh, one of the, just briefly, one of... I'll uh, give you one minute to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just one of our mm -hmm. um, lady who was uh, blind, he was looking through the uh, I mean, Department of Health and uh, through their normal routine uh, processes. She was so delayed and she couldn't get help and someone told about this project. And uh, then she was operated upon, and then she became the MMC uh, and the counselor, and she's still counselor of this uh, local government in Johannesburg. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, that's a feel-good story, right? Yes. You know, the work that yes. you do, and they can go ahead and become leaders in, yes. their, various, uh, yes. in their various communities. Well, after the break, uh, we're going to get to know what these two brothers are going to be speaking about this coming weekend. Do stay tuned to Talking Point. Welcome back to Talking Point. My name is Faraz Patel. I am with uh, Dr. Abbasi and Brother Naeem here. We're looking ahead to the IXA convention. It's a summit that is happening at Nana Memorial. The entrance is free. Uh, you're more than welcome to go ahead and attend it this weekend just to get a good amount, a, a wholesome amount of knowledge, guidance, and of course taking it through to your communities. And of course you can invite your non-Muslim friends to also join in and be part of the conversation. Now, talking about conversations, uh, when uh, the communities come through to the hall, the Naira Memorial, what are they going to expect from both of you? I want to start with you, uh, mm -hmm. Brother Naeem, just your topics, your angle of what you're going to be speaking this weekend. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful to Iksa for uh, inviting me to this conference. And um, my um, topics and conversation that I would like to, to address and speak with the community is, um, as Muslims, our role in the larger society. Mm -hmm. The theme of the conference is khairun uh, nasi anfahumun nas. The best among people are those who are beneficial to humanity. And this is the saying of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So based upon that, how do we engage in the larger society? We talked about social services, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, in America, um, our Muslim organizations, Muslim relief organizations, and their domestic social relief work, alhamdulillah, has been recognized by the larger society. Uh, we are active in disaster reliefs. We are active in 
feeding programs and all. And I, you know, I'm bringing that, um, that, that um, uh, history. Um, we have the lives and examples of Malcolm X yes. and the engagement uh, on the issues of social justice and equality in the society. Um, and uh, alhamdulillah, ICNA has a social justice organization. We work with other uh, activists and social justice organizations, faith-based, to address these issues which are uh, in the society. I am also speaking um, on the topic uh, to the Muslim youth on the topic of uh, making friends or choosing friends. What are the Islamic guidelines? Uh, how important it is for us um, to, to make friends and strengthen one another. Um, and issues, for example, um, I'm also going to talk about um, why organizations are important. Why it is important for uh, a Muslim to engage, um, you know, with this ICSA conference, we'll talk about ICSA, but you know, other organizations that are active in the community. You know, for us, sitting alone, enjoying uh, yes. our time at home, um, is, is not enough. Islam uh, is, a, is a faith that encourages activism, that encourages a movement in you and in the society. And, um, and, and that's, inshallah, and my role will be at this conference. Dr. Abbasi, when, when you take the podium, the, the topics and the angles that Jurgen is speaking about. Yeah, it's very important. Firstly, to introduce the speaker, one of them will be Brother Naim Beg, which mm. is obviously here. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, also from yes, US, yes. is uh, very much uh, experienced in terms of therapy of the youth. So mm -hmm. the role, why the God is important, you know the way this is the atheism is the sort of one of the things which is uh, sort of prevailing as a modern modernism, but uh, it takes the uh, person away uh, from the from the values which we want to inculcate or we want to uh, tell the future generation so uphill task uh, whether it is uh, deciding about the marriages whether it's uh, uh, the need of the god in a human being uh, and the need of the um, uh, prophet uh, what's the importance of all those and uh, uh, many challenges uh, drug abuse mm. uh, the choose your friend as he mentioned from the very beginning uh, hard work all those uh, uh, topics related to the youth and similarly the, I mentioned about the women empowerment uh, we are going to talk about that and obviously the uh, universal social I mean values uh, uh, to have them uh, in the society and as an individual as well. So the topics are there. Then uh, we have many uh, Urdu speaking uh, population as well. Uh, for, for them, we have a um, Senator Mushtaq uh, Ahmed, uh, he's a senator, uh, mm -hmm. member of the Senate from Pakistan. He is also visiting us. Uh, also, uh, other Iqbal Hassan. Uh, who is also a uh, member of uh, board member of uh, welfare organization al khidmat doing great job in pakistan as well so he is also uh, he will be the speaker for the um, uh, urdu community we are going to have the other organization i mentioned about senco a member of parliament speaking to us uh, brother, brother ibrahim rasul the ex premier and the ambassador yes. to us uh, will be the keynote speaker uh, in our the seminar, which titled as "Building Bridges, uh, Strengthen Communities, Building Bridges, uh, Strengthen Families," so he will be the keynote speaker with the member of parliaments, and uh, we are going to have the other organisations uh, representing themselves uh, from, I mean, uh, OCAF, Senco, uh, Pakistan South Africa Association, PASA, uh, and Pakistan Trade Federation. Uh, Bangladesh Islamic Forum, Somali uh, forums, and so there are so many other organizations uh, will be the part of the uh, of the convention. So I therefore request to everyone that please bring your youth, particularly your um, uh, women, uh, so that they can be part of uh, uh, this. Uh, not only the, for the convention, but for the organization in future, uh, because it's, uh, I think it's well known when the good work and the deans comes to a woman, it enters into the house. 
when it is only for the men, it just uh, uh, just outside the door. Hundred percent. We are going to come back after the break, and the reason why is I want to dedicate more time to go back, going back in time, mm -hmm. but also how it ties up to the present and mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, from an American perspective, 9-11 and Islamophobia, mm -hmm. post 9-11, how that has changed. And of course, uh, Dr. Abbas, you were there during, of course, the dark days of apartheid and how Iksa played a role in helping civil society, <coughs> you know, uh, destroy the evil that was apartheid. So do stay tuned to uh, Talking Pride. We'll be back after the break to wrap up the conversation with Dr. Abbasi and Brother Naeem. Do stay tuned. Welcome back to Talking Point. This is the final section here. We're looking ahead to the ICSA summit that is happening this weekend at Nana Memorial. Dr. Abbasi, uh, you were there during the dark days of apartheid. Um, we saw civil society, but most importantly, youth being involved because apartheid or the dismantling of apartheid had a lot of it to be with youth and their involvement with regards to this. Uh, you were speaking of uh, that youth are not involved now in tackling today's issues. Why is that so and how important is this conference in trying to convince the youth to get involved? Because there are always going to be challenges, whether it's with the old government or whether it's with the new government, those challenges remain. Yeah, look, this is very important. I think uh, we know that South, South Africa is uh, the country of diverse uh, communities. And first, let me talk about the Muslim community and the youth. The, what I witnessed, uh, I witnessed the 1994 elections. And before that, there was a history of all communities, including the including um, uh, Indian communities and the role of the Muslims uh, in, during the time of struggle. And youth were involved. And we knew about Hector Peterson and uh, all those youth days which we celebrate, and there was a purpose behind that. And uh, our, uh, But from 1994 onwards, I think before that, we as a communities were segregated in our areas, like Mayfair or Lenizy or Azadville and we 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 have our cultures and uh, and that surroundings around us to do something uh, for the for the country and for the community but i realized that then people moved out from there and they came to the institutions where that legacy was not carried forward and uh, then the so called most modernized schooling and uh, then then they lost what they have to do, actually, the challenges of the post-apartheid. So I think uh, it uh, across the board, probably all the communities are suffering from it. And if we uh, don't give the platform to them, where they can I mean, care and share and uh, give their time to the communities, uh, I, I think the country is uh, going to be at loss in, in, in general. So I think the ICSA uh, realized it and that's why we, re we, we knew that how difficult it is that uh, asking uh, your children uh, to come out and do something over the weekends where they are watching or playing or watch, playing soccer, watching the matches, and they will ask you this question, um, dad and mom and uncle, why you are taking us to the thing while other uh, children are not doing it. Mm. So that lack of interest is not good for us, and we are motivating that. Uh, uh, what we say, first al khairat. So you must do this in, uh, uh, in social media when someone calls you uh, to do good for the communities. Because for the Muslim, this this job is mandatory, equally mandatory as we are going to the masjid and reading the Maud and the Quran and, the, um, and uh, fasting in the month, helping to the other, to live for the other is also equally mandatory. We are as a ummah, we have to do the work, not as an individual. So we cannot be ummah by sitting at home and doing nothing for the community. 
it's, it's obligatory on us to just say, Kuntum Khair Ummati Nukhra Jatli Nas, you are made community for the people. So I think uh, that uh, to realize uh, ourselves and to be a role model for our youth, that's the first thing is mandatory for the parents and then uh, making the youth involved uh, in the community work. And we have got four projects already going on. And in future, we, are, uh, in, we intend to have uh, our, uh, with our uh, partner organization, to have a, a sort of, uh, uh, in, uh, where we can issue them the certificates of community work, uh, which, should be, which should carry some weight that they have done good work for the communities from the school age uh, up to the university and beyond. Alhamdulillah. Final question to you, yeah. uh, Brother Naeem. 9-11, uh, a lot of, you know, the, we had the rise of Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. uh, hate crimes against Muslims had increased. Uh, we've seen over the years, I won't say a sense of tolerance, but more and more ethnic groups have come as, and become a shield for Muslims because we saw what happened with Obviously, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, their murders at the hands of white supremacists. Tying up with the work that Ixa in North America does in trying to make sure that there is a promotion of acceptance, a promotion of peace, and a promotion of making sure that as communities, whether it's minorities or with the majorities, that they can work in coexistence for a better society, even in a country like America. Absolutely, and thank you for, for bringing this up. Um, after 9-11, um, you know, there was uh, a lot of uh, learning for the American Muslim community. And, um, and when I say American Muslim community, um, uh, the diversity of the community in itself, and we have a great history of civil rights struggle in America, where black uh, American Muslims participated in, in that civil rights struggle. Um, you know, the great uh, Muhammad Ali or um, the struggles of Malcolm X and, the, and how the transition that Malcolm X was about to take um, in his life where he realized after visiting uh, Kaaba, after performing Hajj, that Islam is so beautiful and so universal. I mean, Muslims are, come from all over the world. And um, the white man is not the Satan. So, it's, so that realization was that, okay, now how do we work together in the society? And um, I think over, over a period of time, American Muslims were more worried about going after the American dream, right? But 9-11 shook us, okay? Um, American Muslim, Muslims had nothing to do with it, uh, but yes, it impacted us. Uh, there was uh, a, life, a rise of Islamophobia, um, and, uh, but that, um, alhamdulillah, I think it's by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we saw that as an opportunity for, our, for the growth of our community, um, uh, working with, in the society at large addressing the issues that you know, previously we were worried about just the zoning for our masajid. No, it's not just the zoning for our masajid that is important, but it is important that what are the public schools teaching, okay? If there are over 40 million Americans are considered food insecure, you know, as Muslims, it is our role. Prophet will ask, Prophet taught us, if your neighbor is sleeping hungry, you are not a good Muslim anymore. So how do we play that role? How do we address the issue of why there are 40 million Americans who are considered food insecure in one of the richest nations in the world? So we raised that awareness. We, we did a campaign on this issue. And it's, uh, we addressed the policy matters because of that there is uh, hunger in America. Um, and along with that, you know, um, uh, when um, the movement of Black Lives Matter, yes. Um, there was a discussion in the community, should we support, should we stay silent, should we participate? We felt uh, uh, from ICNA's platform that no, we must participate. There is an issue of police brutality and we must address that. You know, uh, when there, it was Guantanamo Bay yes. and there were Muslims who were put in those prisons yes. in Guantanamo Bay, 
there were people who stood with yes, us. Yes. There were people who said that that is torture happening in those prisons. So Alhamdulillah, now we are uh, from ICNA's platform, our social justice organization um, is addressing the issue of prison reforms in America with other communities, yes. with other faith organizations. Um, and we are addressing the issues of, uh, as, as I said, uh, living wage. You know, why in America people are still um, struggling to have a living wage. You know, it's, uh, uh, this is a struggle that we are, you know, we are presenting this uh, from Islamic perspective that, you know, before uh, the Prophet said, before the sweat dries, you must pay. Yeah, right? exactly. So, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I think from, from uh, now, uh, there are over 3,500 Islamic centers and masajid in America. The community is growing, alhamdulillah, and along with that, you know, in almost in every major city, the community is engaged with politicians. We invite politicians to come and speak in our Islamic centers and masajid. Tell us, what are you going to offer to the community? So uh, there's a much more engagement politically. Uh, a Muslim youth is going into the fields of social sciences, law, politics, um, they are um, doing internships with the politicians, uh, learning how the American political system works. So Alhamdulillah, overall, there's much more awareness, engagement from the, uh, in America. Alhamdulillah. Brothers, I wish we had more time to speak, but unfortunately time is Thank against us. Brother you. Naeem Beg, Dr. Harun Abbasi, all the best for the convention this weekend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the ability to convince more people to be active in their communities and, of course, most importantly, create a better society for all of us in a world that is right now challenged in so many ways. Uh, just a reminder, it's the ICSA Summit. It's happening at Nana Memorial this weekend, September the 16th to September the 18th. If you do have time, please do go ahead and visit and just be inspired by some of the speakers that will be attending there. That's all we have for you here on A Talking Point. My name is Faraz Patel from the team. We say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and jazakallah.